All right, IED, this is the Design A Protective Case, and we're going to look at the different projects that we've made. We're going to evaluate the solution. So there are a lot of different projects that are here already nice and spaced out and ready to go. Some of them look a little bit uh, better than the other ones in terms of like how they fared with the 3D printer. Uh, but that being said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna like look at these individual ones and we're gonna evaluate the solution. Now, this is the designer, this is the competitor's product. So you can see how we've got the holes down the bottom. You can see that the hinge just like easily opens and closes. And it's got this latch in the front and this latch in the front can just like completely close. The big thing about this one was that it was way too big. And if you put the headphones inside, then they could just easily rattle around and get damaged in the process. So we came up with some ideas of some solutions to redesign this protective case and kind of make it to your own whims and see what you can come up with. Now, when it comes down to it though, the first design that we come up with, even after brainstorming and stuff, are gonna have some problems that go along with it. Uh, here's our first design. You can tell that we have some holes in the bottom for, for breathing, but the hinge, whenever we 3D printed it, the hinge was made with such small, let's see if we can get this right here. The hinge was made with such small distances between that whenever we put the dowel rod in for it to move back and forth, the hinge that just snapped right off. So that's one thing that we can tell about this project compared to the other ones is that, well, if we were to go back on this, we would definitely need to improve upon the hinge design for starters. Uh, the second thing is whenever you put the headphones in, let's see if it actually makes it. So you can see how there's like a little bit of length left over at the top. So even if I put them in kind of cattywampus, uh, it wouldn't go. Now also, it looks like that the headphones can actually make it through the holes on the bottom, which is probably not a good idea to have going either. All right, there's, there's one idea. Um, another idea is to make the case a lot larger. Uh, once again, the hinge on the back was uh, really small, but it didn't break off. Uh, but at the same time, if we look at the tolerances, it's actually a little bit tight. So it doesn't actually fit. So the length of the middle right here doesn't quite fit up with the length right here. We would really have to force this in. And chances are, whenever we do try to force this in, we're probably gonna end up breaking it. You can still see the stuff at the bottom and uh, on a positive, this one was made shorter and the headphones can easily fit inside, uh, but it looks like it was also made longer in the process. And because of that, whenever it's put inside, I think they seem to rattle around just as much as if they were put inside the competitor's case. So there's another option that we have. Okay, let's look at another option. This one, the hinge was made way too short, so they just took some duct tape and said, you know what, we're gonna put some duct tape on this. And on the inside, if you look inside, we have a small opening. And this small opening can easily hold the two earbuds, but it doesn't really hold them 100% secure, and it kind of pokes out a little bit whenever we look at it. So there's a little bit of issues that we need to go with this one. The tab for the front is probably a little too thin to, to start with. I don't really see that living uh, for very long, especially if you're gonna take that and put it in your pocket or something along those lines. And there's another one. Um, let's say, look at this one. They made it a little bit shorter. It's roughly the same dimensions as the competitor's case uh, in the length, but it was just made shorter to, to compensate for it. They also made this hole a little bit larger. The um, hinges are actually, uh, instead of being too far away, they're actually a little bit too short. They don't quite make it. Okay, and so we can see if we can try to snap these in place, but they're really small, so it's gonna be hard to actually get this hinge on and to stay on. Let's see if we can actually get it to go. Come on, come on. I heard a snap, oh, no, they're not gonna go. It's a little bit short, so even whenever I do try to snap it in there, they just end up falling off the hinges. Okay, and there's some holes in the bottom so that you can actually have some breathability. Uh, the hole, the rectangle in the front, is probably a little bit too large for this one. So, 
that's how that would actually compare against this one. Remember, when you're evaluating the solution, you're seeing like what makes yours different than the competitors. Did you actually, did you actually fix the problem that they had, or did you uh, keep the problem, or did you make an entirely new problem? Because uh, sometimes, whenever you design things, uh, sometimes you end up just making an entirely new problem in and of itself. Uh, let's see here, and then I've got two more. Uh, this one is got the, the 3D printing failed on the top part of this, so that wasn't part of the 3D design. That was just an oopsie on the 3D printer. Uh, but the hinges were set up to where they don't align up on the back side. So you can see how the hinge on top and the hinge on the bottom are different from each other. This was a new problem that was created. So the old one had the hinges actually put in and they lined up with each other. So when we made this design, we actually ended up creating an entirely new problem altogether. Uh, that being said, the general width of it is run about the same, uh, but it's also just as tall, but we had a different strategy for this one. The strategy was to take the headphones and to put them in like this, and that they would just easily open and close. The problem is it wasn't made deep enough to actually do that so the headphones kind of stick out a little bit so there's some definite um, readjusting that we're going to need to do on this one as well okay and then in this project they made it a um, little tall but i want to actually note this hinge design this hinge design is actually spot on when it comes to like the tolerances so let's see if i can actually get a hole to go through here in the middle if you look at that this hole can actually go straight through. You can put a dowel rod in this and it'll probably work really, really well. Uh, that being said though, the hinge up at the front doesn't really come off unless you force it and it's actually going in a little bit too far whenever you have it set up. So you have to pull on it a little bit, which may be actually what their intention is to do, that it actually locks into place a little bit. Um, let's check and see if it actually fits the headphones inside. So the headphones, whenever you put them in, uh, it doesn't fit this way, but I think their intention was to try to get it to fit inside the holes, if I remember correctly. And the holes are just a little bit too tight. This could actually come from the 3D printer, or it could also be that you're using the exact same size of the diameter of the hole as you are for the diameter of this hole. If you have the exact same in the CAD software whenever you print it out, that's not gonna be enough space for you to actually try to fit something in. That's just gonna give you an exact fit, or sorry, an exact tolerance, and it doesn't really work at all. So uh, in redefining our design, uh, whenever this hole gets larger, these things will work out absolutely perfect. Um, the thing about all of these designs is that every single one of them, whenever you first make it, it has some need for improvement. So whenever you're evaluating your solution, and if you're a digital student, you can use any one of these uh, to try to evaluate that solution. Uh, but whenever you're trying to evaluate the solution, make sure that you understand that these designs are iterative processes. And what I mean by that is that this isn't the end all be all. So like whenever you print this, this is 3D printing a prototype. And even engineers that are professionals out in the world, they don't uh, just instantly make a fantastic 100% dimensionally accurate product right off the bat. They have to go through and they have to analyze everything and make corrections as they see fit. Uh, it's not the first, a one hit wonder is not usually going to happen. So use the evaluate the design, use any one of these to, to help you guys along and uh, write about them. Try to improve upon it and what would you change? How would it be different? What was good? What was bad? And what would you do differently? Uh, Y'all thanks for watching and I'll talk at you later.